Hello and welcome to this ETEM webcast. My name is Uwe Schmitz. I'm a product manager at ETEM Industrie Technik in the division automation. Today I will guide you through our ETEM motion designer and we will configure a linear unit with motors, controller and gearboxes. We can access the ETEM motion designer uh, through the ETEM uh, internet pages uh, under automation configuration. And the first page that we're getting is just displayed here. We have uh, two choices. One choice is the product catalog, um, which gives us a list of products. So for those of you who already know what kind of linear unit motor gearboxes um, you wish to have, you can go through this. We will choose the detailed configuration because uh, we will have an application and we will describe the application and then the ETEM motion designer. The motion designer will provide us with a selection of linear units, motors, gearboxes and controllers. Our application uh, is a printer head that is moved horizontally and used to, uh, for example, print uh, on paper or any other textile, for example. Uh, we know some technical detail, it's the repeatability, we know the length, which should be 2.5 meters. Uh, we know the weight of the print head and the maximum speed, the acceleration. We have some information about the environment. But, of course, we don't know what is the right combination of linear unit motors and controllers, and that's why we are using the ETEM Motion Designer. Next page that we see is uh, a choice of the different kind of principles of linear units. Uh, uh, the one here is that we have a moving carriage and a fixed linear unit. And at the right side, it's just the other way around. It's the carriage is fixed and the linear unit is moving. That's sometimes used for Z-axis or positioning uh, applications. Uh, we are using here the, uh, the standard application, I think. It's the moving carriage and the uh, linear unit. We are selecting the uh, linear unit with the moving carriage and the next step when we go to continue brings us to the screen that we call basic requirements. Um, we can here say uh, what repeatability we would like to see. We said our application would require uh, 0.1 millimeters of repeatability. We can, if we wish, select the drive technology. So in case we don't want to see a chain or we don't want to see a, a ball screw, we can deselect it. Um, we can also leave everything as it is. Here we have the choice to define what kind of uh, power supply environment we have. So mainly our three-phase power supply available in our um, factory or the place where we want to put the, the system or is it just one phase to 30 volts, then some information about the encoder systems. So if you know what selection to do, you can do it. If you don't know, no worries. You can run with the pre-selected options that ETEM has put there. The next step, this is uh, very important that you need to say what is the mounting arrangement. Mainly, is it horizontal or vertical? or any other position in the room. Um, of course, for our application, we have a printing head that is being moved, it's horizontally. And our printing head should be mounted under the linear unit, so that's why I've, I've turned the carriage down, and I think that's the application that we want to see. Continue brings us to the screen motion profile which allows us to define the motion and the load. I'm starting with the load. Um, it gives me a default uh, configuration that I can detail here, like I'm putting in the name of our load, I'll call it printhead, the weight of it, and you see this little diagram here, the X, Y, Z axis, um, that represents where is the load located. Here, as the default, it's in the center of gravity of the carriage. However, our printer head, it, it has a dimension and it's a bit below the uh, carriage, so we are saying it's 25 millimeters under the carriage. Saving the load, and I'm getting a load here, so it's pretty simple. 
Um, I could add now further loads, like uh, if the load would change, like I'm emptying or filling something, I could add up to 255 loads. For our little example, we keep it as it is and move to the motion profile. When I say add motion, I'm getting a screen that allows me to define the type of the motion, uh, like trapezoidal or any other free motion. I'm choosing here this uh, one third uh, trapezoidal uh, form because this matches best our application of a moving printing head. Um, target position, we said the, the axis should be two and a half meters long. We know that the maximum speed is five meters per second. By the way, I could also add other uh, data here so it would calculate the, the remaining data. Um, I'm adding the load here, which is our printhead, and you've seen that the calculation is already being made, so I've set uh, three point, I've set the uh, meter per second and it's, and it's calculating the rest. I'm saving it. And I'm getting an entry here on my little table motion profile. I have a motion one with a print head as a load. Um, I'm choosing a motion type uh, and I'm moving it from zero to two meter and fifty. So for our example, I just want to move the load back to the, to the point zero, to the original point. I could now add further motions, but to make it easy, I just say return to the start position. I'm getting a predefined profile that is bringing me back to the start position, so target position here is zero. Saving it, and we are done. With these few steps, I have defined a motion profile, bringing it to 2 meters 50, back getting it visualized here in this diagram. So I have the lines for, um, uh, for the distance, for the speed and for the acceleration. Saying continue. And the motion designer provides me with a list of linear units, motors, gearboxes, controllers, that are all matching my requirements, so it would all, they would all fulfill my applications. Um, they would all fit together mechanically, so there is no machinery required to, to put all these components together. I could even filter more linear units or more combinations from this selection by saying, oh yeah, I want to have only uh, motors with a certain decoder type, like absolute decoders or, or resolvers. Um, I could have the gearbox shape like angled or not angled, like say I'm angled, just to show you that I can do some pre-selections. For further selection I could compare, I'm picking two linear units, compare them and I see what technical data do they both provide. So I, I can see if there is some margin in speed, load for future applications that uh, maybe help me to also be future-proof and also um, be able to do further applications. I'm selecting here a linear unit, PS here, and when I'm saying continue, I have the opportunity to tell ETEM how the system should be assembled, like where should be the drive components be assembled, or in which direction should the gearbox point or how should the motor or the cabling be mounted. I can leave it open, I can do the assembly myself, it's just a simple kind of assemble, but I can also say, please ETM, I wanted, I wanted to have it that way. Parameterization is possible, ETM can do even a pre-configuration of the controller. And of course, um, in most of the cases, the linear units and the, uh, the drive sets are being integrated into a full machine and connected to a PLC or to a PC system. So I can say which field bus com configurations I want to have. For example, Profinet. Let's just choose that one. If I have a safety requirement that the motor should stop uh, safely, for example, when a door is opened in the machinery or something else happened. 
Um, then I choose an STO safety module. I can say which cable lamps I want to have or even other accessories like proximity switches I could choose. All the components here listed on the screen, they fit mechanically and electrically to my linear system. So no worries, uh, it's only possible to choose components that really, really fit or are matching to, to the linear unit being selected. Then it's possible to download a project documentation. I'm opening it and I'm getting a documentation that shows me which components did I select, uh, what are the specifications I gave, what is the capacity that my system still has, so how much margin do I have in, uh, in load and speed, further details on the motion profile and also information about the tension of the timing belt and so on. Um, so this documentation can be used in the full machinery documentation. I don't have to create a documentation just for this myself. I just get it from ETEM for free. CAD data. It's possible to download any type of um, um, CAD data and integrate that into my, um, my design tool. Last not least, there is an IMD file, which is a configuration file for the ETEM Motion Soft. The IMD file is a file that is generated by the Motion Designer and being used by the ETEM Motion Soft, which is the installation and commissioning tool. So it's not required to uh, uh, put in the uh, system parameters when doing the commissioning and installation. It can just be used from the configuration uh, and being reused in the installation. Last not least, um, the configuration that we just have chosen can be added to the cart and it can be directly purchased from the shop. It's also possible to ask for a quote or to get in contact with an ETEM representative um, to discuss further details or to, to respond to uh, questions that you may have. Today we have configured a linear unit with motor and controller. Thank you for joining us today. I hope the information provided was helpful to you. Further information you can find from our internet pages in the section Automation.